Hello, this is Clint Halstead, and this is a course called uh, Introduction to Microprocessors. And we're going to be working on uh, lesson uh, or section 5.2 in the book uh, Design Embedded Systems with Pick Microcontrollers, Principles, and Applications, second edition with Tim Wilmshurst. So, should have read section 5.2 in the book on page 110. I'm going to go over programming exercise 5.2. Uh, in, in this exercise, we're going to be, it's going to be about branching, and it's going to be this program called Fibachi Full. So in the book, it says that we have to go to the website and get the code. So <clears throat> actually, if you go to the website, this is the, the textbook's uh, free uh, resource website from the author and uh, it's a www.embedded-knowhow.co.uk if you go to chapter 5, you click chapter 5 you should see uh, example 5.2 yeah which I think is the same thing as exercise 5.2 yes yeah, it's, it's the same thing as exercise 5.2 so if we click on that then we can just uh, Hit Control A and then Control C. That'll copy all that text here. And now it's it's in the uh, now we can just paste it whenever we want to paste it somewhere. So let's close all this stuff out. Okay, so let's create a new project. The textbook says we need to call it. Uh, let's see, called Fibachi Full. Okay, so let's do that. So let's go file, new project, and then we're going to do a standalone project. We're going to use the mid range family, and then we're going to look for the pick 16F84A. That's the chip we're using. We're going to pick our tool, and today it's going to be a simulator. Then we're going to choose the MPASM, which is this assembler program. This is the C compiler, and this is the assembler. Okay? And we're just going to call it, the textbook says Fibonacci full, and we can say set as main project. Click finish. There. Now added it with, we can minimize all of our other projects. So here's our project. So create our nice project for us. So now we need to add a source file. So we just we click on the source file under Fibonacci full. We say new assembly file and uh, just say finish. Now it's got the, the blank file. Now we can paste uh, what we copied before. So we paste the code here. Um, what I like to do is comment, you know, put your initials here. And then today's date. Okay. Exercise 5.2. Okay, so. Everything should be good. We don't really have to do anything. The code's already here. So um, all we're going to do is compile it. Hit the little compile button. It should compile it for us. It says uh, zero errors completed, loading completed. Now we click this little button up here. It looks like the, a, a play button. Uh, just click that and it'll start running. And you can see it's it's running now because uh, you have the stop button and the pause button. That means that it's running. If if the if the stop and the pause button are uh, highlighted like that, that means that it's running. If all these other ones are grayed out, so don't stop it. What we want to do is pause it. If you stop it, then you have to redo everything. So we're just going to pause it, and it was running in the middle of the code. You can see it's not at the beginning of the code because it was just cycling through this code. Um, so we can make it reset by hitting the reset button. That, that'll take it all the way back to the very beginning. Now what we want to do, uh, the book says we want to add some watch windows. 
So if we go up here on the tab, it says new uh, debugging watches. Okay. So these are ones I added before, but I'm going to delete them and show you how to add them. Now what we're going to do is just uh, there's something down here that says new window, so you just you just click in that window. So you double click, or you can right click and say new watch. Uh, either either thing does the same thing. If you do new watch, you can come up here. So there's two different ways you can do it. We want to add we want to add all these variables. These are your your variables: fib zero, fib one, fib two, fib temp, count. We want to add all those variables. You're supposed to be able to, the way the tool is supposed to work is if you look right here in the global symbols, you're supposed to see these names right here. Uh, but there's currently a bug in the program that does not let you see it. Now I'll go to a website to show you what it should look like. Um, here's a website that shows you what this window should look like. It should uh, have all these values here uh, in your code. And then you just click it and you say OK, but something's wrong. I'm going to have to send a, a message to, to, I'm going to have to try to put in a ticket maybe to microchip um, because they have lots of, this is a new release of software and I'm sure they have lots of issues. I've, I've read a lot of their issues and uh, actually you can see right here uh, they have a, a new release, but I read through the release notes and it did not say that it would fix it, but it actually probably would be a good idea to install that new version. So I think that's probably the next thing I'm going to do. You can go up here and you can see what version you have on the about. We have version uh, 1.3. So you can see here that um, they have a 1.41. So that's probably a good idea to download the new version. So I'll probably do that later. But for now, when you go new watch, um, what we're going to have to do is just enter all these values in. Okay, so 0x10, um, and you can separate them by commas, I think. Let's try this, 0x11, 0x12, 0x13, 0x, oh, let's just do, let's just do those first ones. Actually, let's just do those two right there, there's three. Let's do 10, 11, and 12. That's fib 0, 1, 2, and 3. So let's say OK. OK, see those populated down there. I, I want to show you another way to add variables. You can just click it in this box here. You can say 0x13. See, and then added it. You have to double click on it though. 1, well, double click on it. And then 0x14. Um, and this, that, so that's all your values right there. Now you can see that the values that they hold. You can see right now that the value of 10 has a value of 8 inside of it. Uh, the value of 11 has a value of, of D. Um, so yeah, this name here is supposed to be a, a name. So fib0, this really should say fib0 here in the address, but yeah, so anyway. Um, <clears throat> So that's the way we're going to have to use it. Let me show you another way to look at these internal registers. If you go to Window, Debugging, or actually uh, Pick Memory Views, you can go to File Registers, and you can see your file registers here. For example, uh, number 10 is going to be right there. Number 11 is going to be right here. 12, 13, and 14. So you can see it's 8, D, 15, 8, and 9, which is the same as on your watches. Uh, 8, D, 15, 8, and 9. See, that they're the same. 8, D, 15, 8, and 9. 15, 8, and 9. Yep, so they're the same thing. So either way you want to look at it. If you want to look at your file registers, and let's step through this code and let's see what happens. Now this first statement says uh, move literal to W. Oh, let's, let's also look at the W register. Let's type in W reg here. Okay, so we can see the W register. <clears throat> it says move literal to W0. So if we step through this code, let's hit this uh, down arrow. It's going to move a, uh, a 0 to W. And then it's going to move that 0 to fib 0. So that should be um, fib 0 is right here. So this 8 should turn into a 0. Let's see if it does. 
Yes, it does. See, it turns red when it changes. Now let's click uh, the down button again. Uh, and let's keep in mind that we want to answer the question in the book. Single step initially and watch the Fibonacci series develop into Fib 0, 1, 2, and 3. How many numbers in the series fit into the 8-bit range? Okay. So how many numbers in the series fit into the 8-bit range? So let's, uh, <clears throat> let's just try to count that. Okay. So we just that's something we'll just be remembered. So we want to look at that until the um, until these uh, overflow. Okay. So let's just keep counting here. So we click the button, then then what's happening is it's clearing all the fib registers. Next, watch this. Move W to F fib one. So it should clear this fib one register, which is register eleven. That's fib one right here. So let's see if if we click that, it should clear that one. Oh, I'm sorry. It moved a 1 into W. That's right. <laughs> so I moved a 1 in there, so it's actually making it a 1. Okay, now it's going to move the same 1 into... It's going to move from the, the W register into Fib 2, which is 12. Okay? So let's see. Okay, that moved into 1. That's good. Okay, so let's see the next thing. It says move literal to W3 and then move W to F counter. So counter should have the value of 3. Right now the counter has value of 9. So let's step through here. So there's a 3. And then that 9 should get replaced with a 3. So that's that's what happened. Now we got 3 into the uh, counter register. So uh, now we're, we're setting, stepping into a, a something that has a label. It's called forward. So... Uh, let's get, keep stepping through. So move F, Fib 1 to 0. So it should move whatever's in the Fib uh, 1 register, which is register 11, should move that value into the W register. So let's see if it does. Yep, it does. Move it to a 1. Now let's, uh, now it should move Fib 2 into the W register. Remember that the comma and the 0, the, the 0 is the, the destination register. The destination, if it's if that's a zero, then it moves it to the W register. If it's a one, it moves it back into the same register, which really just doesn't really do anything useful, except test the bit. Okay, <clears throat> so it moved fib two into W register. Okay, that's good. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, it added. I'm uh, sorry. Yeah, that's an add WF. So it added W to F and stored the result in the W register. Now it, we're going to see. That we we need to add the status register. Let's add the status register. Down. Status. Status register. Oh, and by the way, um, let's look at the file registers when we do some of this. I'll do that here in a minute. I'll switch to this view here. Bit test F skip if if clear. Um, the status. Well, uh, bit C. Okay. So. It shouldn't. It shouldn't be. It shouldn't be the status. The carry bit. So there should be no carry bit at this point. So it should. Um, it should not be cleared. Or I mean, it should. It should be cleared. So bit test f skip of clear. So it's probably going to uh, skip. Yeah. So it skipped, and so it did not do the reverse. It didn't do the go to reverse. It just. It's doing the move w to f fib temp. So now there's another uh, register called fib temp, which is 13. So it's going to move w to uh, it's going to move whatever's in the w register to this register 13. So let's see if it does that. Yep, it moved two into here. You can see that it's red now. Now it's going to increment the counter and store the result in the counter. If that was a zero there, it'd store the result in the w register. But since it's a one, it's going to store the store the result back into the counter. So let's see. The counter, that should make the counter increment, which is the 14. So let's look here at 14, the one right above the one highlighted, um, and see if it increments. Yes, it did. See, it turned red. I'm not going to highlight the register uh, that even with blue because it, you can't see that it's red. Um, I'll, I'll just highlight the one on the bottom of it. So that's good. So now, um, well, you can step through the rest of it. I think you get the idea, um, and all these instructions are just going to be the same, but... Um, as you step through the code, 
try your best to uh, answer the questions in the book. And oh, let me let me show you what it looks like from the file register menu. This is the all the registers in the chip, all of them. Okay, uh, all the file registers. So let's step through here and let's watch those change. It's kind of interesting to see. You can see here that these registers are changing. These are the special function registers that we've talked about. You know, the status register, the 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 port A, port B, all that stuff is in the very top of the file uh, registers. And you can see over here the address. So this is address 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 2. It's kind of a row and column format. And then they, they've got the ASCII version of that decoded over there too. So you can see as you're stepping through this code, you can see what registers are affected. So that's a really quick way. And I wish the watch register thing worked better. I wish you could see the variables over here. And if you download the new code, maybe it'll start working. So I, I think that's maybe the next thing. Possibly, I, I will try to do that later on. But anyway, I think I went over enough for now. This really goes over um, branching. And you can see the go to instruction was just used. It said go to forward and it jumps up here. And then it continues on down to the program. Uh, it loads registers. Uh, and then it says go to forward. So it's going to just keep looping. And the only way to get out is with this bit test f skip of clear. So the only way to get out of this is for it to uh, get out of this that loop. And you can see here that those uh, Fibonacci numbers are in increasing and counting up that Fibonacci series. So just go through the uh, the book and try to answer the questions as best you can. And I I'll see you for the next lesson. Thanks.